right, we are back with another edition of Digging Deep. This is actually the first um, Sleeper Fights episode, and we're going to talk about a sleeper fight on UFC 258. We are joined by a special guest, UFC Bantamweight Vince Morales. There he is. And uh, not only is he UFC Bantamweight, he's actually uh, the cousin of one of the men that we are going to talk about, Ricky Simone. So how are you doing? Real good, man. Real good. Uh, a little jealous that I can't be training with Ricky right now, but real good. Uh, how you've, I'm sure you've been talking to him. How, how good does he feel going into this fight? Feels great. It's uh, up a weight class, so he just thankfully doesn't have to cut a bunch of weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things I was like, because he just he just got into a fight. He just had a fight a little while ago, so I yeah. think the turnaround might might have been better for him to to take that featherweight fight. Yeah, I think that's kind of, that's kind of where him and my manager they were kind of on the same page about that. So, hell yeah, yeah cool. All right, sweet. Let's uh, let's go through the tail of the tape, and then we'll jump right into things. All right, we've got Brian Kelleher, twenty two and 11, 34 years of age, five foot six. Obviously, two bantamweights, but they're taking this fight at one hundred and forty five pounds. 66 inch reach. Then we've got Ricky Simone, 17 and 3, 28 years old, 5 foot 6, and he's got the reach advantage at 69 inches. So these stats are, I think, are a lot like NFL stats. I have no idea how realistic those stats are, uh, but he does have a big, uh, a, a decent reach advantage in three inches. So uh, we'll kick things off with you, Joe. What are your uh, What are your thoughts on the fight, and um, and how do you think? Uh, who, what's the path to victory for both men? Yeah. All right. First off, it's great having Vince on. It's great joining you again, Sergio, and you, Mike. I'm I'm excited as hell. Um, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of wrestling. I'm a huge fan of grappling, and that's something Ricky Simone does very well. That man's relentless. He's relentless in his pace. He's relentless in his takedowns, and I expect to see him doing that even in this fight, even with the threat that is Brian Kelleher's guillotine. I mean, uh, he loves to throw that guillotine any chance he's got. So, I mean, it's going to be very interesting seeing Ricky Simone shoot for takedowns, seeing Brian Kelleher go for su submissions, and I think it's going to be very intriguing seeing what happens on the feet between these two. I think they're pretty – my 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 idea is that they're they're striking. It's anyone's game on the feet, kind of like we talked about with Gilbert Burns and Kamaru Usman, where I think Simone may have a speed advantage, but Kelleher may have a power advantage. And I'm, I'm kind of basing that off of the hunter reserve fight in that second round when he came back and, and hit him with that left hook. And – um. Man, I just think they're so evenly matched. I think this fight's going to be so high intensity. I wish it was on the main card. Um, that's my little uh, caveat, if I had anything to say about it. But because um, I love these two guys, man, I'm a huge fan of both of them. I'm trying not to fanboy, but it's it's going to be great. I can't wait to see them get in there and rumble. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, no, I'm I am fired up for this one. It's uh, we've learned in the COVID era here when you get a nice matchup and you lose it. It sucks, man. I'm, I'm happy they rebooked this one. Um, I'm very interested to see, like, at 145, Ricky Simone is a massive bantamweight. Pretty curious to see what he looks like at 145. I think that may be advantageous for him. Maybe it doesn't play a factor at all. We will see. Um, but I think it's pretty good chance that both these guys are striking just due to the fact that Kelleher's got that threat with the guillotine. And both of them, I would say, are underrated strikers. So I think no matter where this fight goes, we're kind of getting a banger. Yeah, man, I'm kind of in the same same boat for the most part. Uh, of course, I just every time I'm picturing the fight, I'm seeing Ricky just beat this dude to a pulp, though. Like, uh, uh, I think he did, definitely does have a speed advantage. I think Ricky surprisingly actually hits a lot harder than a lot of people think. Um, he can really, really crack, especially with his left hook. Um, but in this fight, I think what's really you're going to see is a good right hand. Kelleher likes it in that hunter reserve fight. He likes to jump in with that left hook. That's that's bad because you're throwing it from your hips. And that's something that I've talked about and drilled with Ricky back when this fight was booked in August when it was canceled because of me. Uh, he's going to just look to dive that right hand right down through and end on a takedown or hurt him on the feet. Either way, I think you're going to see a lot of that. And as soon as uh, Kelleher is jumping forward, he's going down. That guillotine, Ricky's been defending guillotines. He's drilling guillotine defense since uh, his last contender fight, like religiously, because he's had Marab, he's had Donovan Freelo. He's had a bunch of people that are heavy on guillotines, um, and he's gotten away from it. I don't think it's going to be – I don't even think he's worried about it. Um, I think he's still going to take him down. He might even let him sit that just to just to show off a little bit. Ricky's kind of a egomaniac in some of that stuff. Um, He's going to get him down. He's going to beat him up. He's going to beat him up on the feet. I think it's going to be a matter of time before uh, Kelleher 
uh, unwillingly wilts. So that's where I'm at for it. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting one because I think, like you said, this was originally booked what twice already. So it, they know each other. They've they've been training for each other, and I think that's going to be key here. Is um, it's not like a last minute no, notice fight where anything can happen. You saw with boom when he fought Ray Rodriguez, it was a last minute notice, no time to prep, so he was able to catch him early with a guillotine. It's 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 a different bag of worms when someone's been training for you for, for so long. So I don't know if that early uh, guillotine is really possible with, with Ricky. I think he's expecting it. You know, he knows what the, the path to victory for, for boom is, is a guillotine. So he knows what to expect. Both of these guys have been like just outside the top 15. And the second they get that big fight, they kind of, they fall. So I think this might be the fight for both men. I think this might be the fight that gets them in the top 15. Um, I think if it's an early fight, it favors boom. Uh, the longer this goes, I think it favors Ricky. Um, so it, it's going to be an interesting one. I, I, I really like this fight. I think stylistically it's good. Obviously, the fact that they've been having uh, so much beef on Twitter for so long already, it, uh, it feels like it's only a matter of time before they, they booked it. Um, the one thing I am going to say, though, is Ricky just fought. He looked good. It was, it was a win. It was obviously this is at a higher weight class, and usually fast turnarounds tend to favor the guy who uh, – who didn't have the fast turnaround booms had some lay a layoff so uh that's also something to consider so maybe that does play a factor into this fight who knows yeah that's a good point uh boom did have a little bit of a layoff but he went three and one in 2020 so he, he was active but like you said ricky you know fresh out and like i just i just can't wait for this fight man i just know that these two guys are coming to crack it's going to be great it's going to be a great matchup it's going to be a great fight overall and Personally, I think what you said, Sergio, is how I thought of it. Just from looking at their records and their um, how they finished or won fights, that that boom is more prone to get the submission victory. So if it ends early, it could be boom, and if it goes longer, it could be Ricky maybe grinding him out, winning that decision, and doing exactly what Vince said and making boom will. But things have been so ass backwards lately. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea, and it could be the opposite way. And we could see Ricky Simone getting an early submission victory in this fight, and um, it, or or boom, doing real bad early on, and then maybe getting better as the fight progresses. I have no idea anymore with these picks and with these fights, but I just know that this is like the ideal matchup for like a, like a hardcore fan. Like we know what's going down in that octagon and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, for real. I think uh, Ricky's, Ricky's something special, man. I'm telling you guys, like I've tried training around with a lot of people. There's very few people who can do what Ricky can do, whether that's on, on the feet or on the mat. He's a uh, Man, just training with him every time it's impressive. I, I wish I could be there helping him right now. Man, I think he's gonna do great though. This is a, I think you're looking at like a future future champion with Ricky. He's, that's that, I'm taking biases out of that. I'm taking a mostly how I feel when I train with him <laughs> into consideration with that. So. No, I, I, hear, I see where you're coming. He does everything so well, Vince, like even watching him. I mean, he has all the intangibles to be a champion. What, like When you look at most champions, Usman, Khabib, they have a great grappling and wrestling base and that's exactly what Ricky does phenomenally. Yeah. And he's always improving. So, you know what I mean? I could totally see it. It's not every day you see someone with a 17 and three record outside the rankings. You know, he, he fights anybody. And I think that's what separates him from a lot of people. I mean, his last fight, he took on a, a UFC I've never heard of. Not because he had to. The guy's just outside the top 15. He could have waited, accepted a bigger name. He took the fight anyway. And I think that says a lot about him and, uh, and same thing with with Boom. They they both had that same mentality. Boom fought Ray Rodriguez on no notice too. So it's very interesting when you have two guys who like to scrap. Uh, they don't care who it's against. It it makes for a compelling fight. I'm really looking forward to this. Don't like where it's at in the uh, on the card. <laughs> I think this should be on the main event. But uh, but uh, I do like the fight. Oh yeah. Yep. A yeah, word you need, Joe. Sorry. Go ahead. Mark. Sorry. Yeah. A word you used about Ricky was relentless. And I want to say the combo of his uh, relentlessness and him being at 145, that is a big – it could be a big problem for Keller. Like, I really think that might play a factor in this. Maybe I'm overlooking it, but – It's scary. Ricky's fought – he's had amateur fights up at 170. He's been manhandling people. So, dude, Ricky is going to be – he's going to be a tank in there. It's going to be interesting. I, I can't wait. I didn't know, not know that. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a different breed. He reminds me of like a wolverine, you know, like the animal, <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a honey badger, like one of them guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. accurate. <laughs> yeah. And then Boom is like a guy who looks completely normal, but he's deceivingly good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's just awesome. It's going to be good. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, can't wait. All right, there you have it. There it is. Uh, I'm Sergio Pinheiro, Joe Gravel, Mike Bielby, and, of course, Vince Morales. Thanks again for the time, man. And uh, if you guys haven't, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.